Hey Math Warners, in this lesson you will learn how to graph a relationship and to match graphs with situations. Your ICANN statements read as following. I can match simple graphs with situations and I can graph a relationship. Please record them in your notes. This will be page one of your table of contents. Part of vocabulary you'll come across in this lesson, continuous graph and a discrete graph. What are those? So graphs can be used to illustrate many different situations and oftentimes graphs uh, themselves tell a story of sorts because we're comparing two variables that uh, are related in some fashion. As one changes, the other one changes. Uh, for example, a cardiograph uh, might help a doctor see how a patient's heart is functioning. Over time, the beating of the heart will change. So to relate a graph to a given situation, we're going to use key words in the description. So here, I, uh, there's a relationship here between the number of leaves and time. So each day, several leaves fall from a tree. One day, a gust of wind blows off many leaves. Eventually, there are no more leaves on the tree. We're going to choose the graph that best represents this situation. So notice that uh, we are comparing leaves over the course of time. A couple things to observe. Notice that the, uh, the time never stops. Okay, so as long as we're recording uh, uh, the number of leaves compared to time, then, then time is going to elapse. All right. Um, we, uh, uh, we got, well, what I see here is that as the leaves, um, as time is elapsing, the number of leaves are increasing, uh, then they stay the same. That plateaued line means there's no change. Doesn't mean there's zero leaves, it just means there's no change in the number of leaves. Again, time is still elapsing, but the number of trees is not changing number of leaves rather. So we're going to first uh, read the graphs from left to right to show the time passing. I think we understand what's happening in the graphs here. And then we're going to list key words in order to decide which graph shows them. So in the passage it mentions that each day several leaves fall. Then that means in the graph I should expect that the graph should never be horizontal. Each day several leaves fall. So there's never an occasion where no leaves fall. Graph B shows that there's never any horizontal parts. So we'll keep that in mind. The wind blows off many leaves. So the number of leaves are decreasing over time and only decreasing. We don't put leaves back onto the tree. So I should expect only slanting downward rapidly. Graphs A, B, and C have that. But I will say that graph A has this increase, which makes me a little suspicious. Eventually, there are no more leaves. So at some point, this graph is going to reach uh, zero on the y-axis because there will be no more leaves. And all three graphs do that at this point, here in graph B, and then here in graph C. So ultimately, what this means is that we need to pick the graph that shows all the key phases in the order never horizontal, slanting downward rapidly, slanting downward until it reaches zero, and the correct graph, of course, will be graph B. So now your turn to practice. Uh, you're going to read the passage carefully and pause the video and then at your own pace answer the question only to unpause your video and check for your solution. The air temperature increased steadily for several hours and then remained constant. At the end of the day, the temperature increased slightly before dropping sharply. Choose the graph that best represents this situation. Pause your video now. All right, welcome back. So it appears that we're comparing the change of temperature over time in this situation. And the keywords that are found, it says it increased rapidly, or increased steadily rather, uh, remained constant, and increased slightly before dropping sharply. So that means I should expect some slanting upward. I should expect some horizontal plateau uh, portion of the graph because it remains constant. And then I should expect some slanting upward and then steeply downward. Graph C shows the slanting upward only. Graphs A, B, and C have a horizontal part. And graphs B and C have the slanting upward and then steeply downward. Consequently, our answer should be graph C. Were you correct? 
So a couple terms. Uh, we mentioned continuous graphs. Now these graphs we just looked at are continuous graphs. They have connected lines or curves. Now some graphs are only distinct points, dots on the graph, and they're called discrete graphs. So an example of one of those would be this situation. The graph on theme park attendance is an example of a discrete graph. It consists of distinct points because each year is distinct and people are only counted, rather, people are counted in whole numbers only. You can't have half a person, that's kind of gross. The values between whole numbers are not included since they have no meaning for the situation. So there's only dots on this discrete graph. We're only talking about the very distinct points, um, not continuous, not the fractions and the decimals that exist between those points, only those whole number points in this case. So we're going to look at sketching a graph for a given situation, and then we're going to tell if it's continuous or discrete. So we have the situation, a truck driver enters the street, drives at a constant speed, stops at a light, and then continues. So I notice that as time passes during the trip, the truck's speed is going to do the following. It's going to initially increase, it's going to remain constant, it's going to decrease to a stop, and then it's going to increase only to remain constant again. So that graph may look something like this. Over time, the speed increases, remains constant, decreases, increases, remain con remains constant. Perhaps there's a traffic light here. Uh, now, is this a continuous or discrete graph? Well, it's a line, which means it contains all those points between the data points, so it is obviously a continuous graph. Remember, when sketching or interpreting a graph, pay close attention to the labels on each axis. Two graphs to have two different labels of axes would mean two different things. So for your guided practice, I want you to sketch a graph for this given situation and then tell if it's continuous or discrete. Pause your video now. Welcome back. So a small bookstore sold between five and eight books each day for seven days. That graph may look something like this. We're comparing the number of books sold over the course of days. And you can't sell half a book. Um, so this is going to be a discrete graph because we're only talking about those whole number of books. Uh, all right. For this guy to practice. Uh, create the graph for this situation. Tell if it's continuous or discrete. Pause your video now. All right, so Henry begins to drain a water tank by opening a valve. Then he opens another valve. Then he closes the first valve. He leaves the second valve open until the tank is empty. So we're comparing the amount of water, perhaps the amount of water in the tank uh, over the course of time. So this graph may look something like this. Initially it's going to decline, then it's going to decline more rapidly because he opened up the second valve, and then decline is going to slow down because he closes the valve and leaves only the second valve open. Thus, this graph. Now, is this continuous or discrete? We've got a line here. Not distinct points, but a continuous line, so this is a continuous graph. All right, so sometimes uh, graphs uh, may be comparing the same thing or maybe uh, talking about the same thing, but they mean different things based upon the, the axes. So in this case, graph A is representing a child's distance from the ground related to time. Yet in graph B, we're talking about child's speed related to time. They're both describing a child going down a slide, but because of the, the labels of the axes, they are showing two different things or relating two different uh, relationships. So what we're going to do is create uh, a situation to match the graph given. So in this graph, we're looking at the change of time compared, I'm sorry, I'm sorry rather the change of speed compared to time. It appears the speed decreases at some point then it stays constant for some point only to decrease again. So think of a situation where that might be the case. Here's one example. So the car approaching the traffic light slows down or approaches traffic rather slows down, drives at a constant speed and then slows down until coming to a complete stop. Or perhaps even maybe went through a school zone. Traveling slower down, slows down then travels at a constant speed and then 
travels further, slowing down until it finally stops. So now you're going to practice this. Uh, given the situation, create, or rather given the graph, create a situation that matches the data from the graph. Pause your video now. Alright, so in this graph we're comparing the number of pizzas bought compared to the number of students. Now it is a discrete graph, so I know we're just talking about distinct points, not a continuous line. Um, I know students is the x-axis, pizzas, number of pizzas is, uh, is the y-axis. It initially remains the same, it remains, remains constant until a certain number of students is reached and then it increases to a new constant. So perhaps something like this. When a number of students reaches a certain point, the number of pizzas bought increases. Perhaps uh, another group of friends showed up and then they bought a whole other pizza. So in this lesson you will learn you rather you learned how to graph a relationship and to match graphs with situations.